So before I start this week, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, the first is with the hurricanes coming through and um, disasters happening, people want to help other people. And because of that, I've seen a lot of things showing up in my social media feeds about organizations and which ones you should and should not give to. And I don't know about all the information, but some of the information I've seen I know is false. I researched it and it's not correct. So before you decide to give to somebody, check your facts yourself. There's lots of websites, Charity Navigator websites, one of them, that gives you a lot of information about an organization so you can make an informed decision. But don't just take facts on face value. A lot of them are wrong and you might be missing out on giving to an organization that could do a lot of good. My two cents. So the second thing I want to talk about is apparently I say so um and and a ton. I noticed in my last video. I'm going to work on taking those words out or at least not using them as much as, pot as I have been. But be patient with me, changing your speech patterns is not an overnight process. I'm gonna try. This week was my EGD, remembered it, which is an upper endoscopy where they put the camera down your throat to see if you have a hiatal hernia so they can repair that when you have your gastric surgery. I'm not going to talk much about that because it was the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. I barely know what happened. Went to the surgical center that morning. The IV was the worst part that pinched when they stick the needle in you. Everything else was like it didn't even happen. Uh, they gave me the medicine. I felt like I went to sleep. I woke up and wasn't groggy. I wasn't sick. I wasn't in pain. Left, went to get some breakfast because I hadn't eaten all morning because I had a surgery. Um, it, it feels like it didn't even qualify as a surgery. So for those of you who are worried about it, it's really nothing. Um, I do find out I have a hiatal hernia, so that is something they're going to have to repair. And that's pretty much all I can say about that. It was nothing. Nothing. Um, had my... Dang, there's an um in there. I uh, had my final sleep... St God, um again! Okay. This week was also my last sleep study appointment. I'm going to talk a little bit about how that worked. Um, some things I expected and some things I didn't, and I hope a couple little things I learned is going to help you. I'm not a back sleeper. I've never been a back sleeper. It's just not a natural position for me. It was either my stomach or my side. And as I got older and started having problems with my neck and back, the side became it. Can't sleep on the stomach anymore. Just, it just it's not something I do is sleep on my back. It also makes my back hurt. I have an adjustable bed, so if for some reason I need to lay flat, I can move the bed so it won't hurt as much. But that was not an option here. Um, so I had a big, big backache by the end of it. The appointment was in the evening, obviously. It's the sleep study. I got there, I think, 8.30, filled all the paperwork. They sat me down in the room. I waited a few minutes, and they came in and started hooking me up. Um, they will put wires everywhere. You will have wires on your scalp and your hair. You will have wires at your temples. You will have wires near your chin. You will have wires on your shoulders. You will have wires on your chest. You will have wires on your legs. They are everywhere. Um, and putting them on, it wasn't uncomfortable for me. The lady kept asking me, did this hurt? Did this bother me? Did this sting? And it didn't, but I guess for some people when they're putting on um, the, the leads and everything, it can be a little uncomfortable. Not bad uncomfortable, just like it might sting. Um, they put a little alcohol on before they put on to make sure it's clean. That might, you know, sting a little bit. But it didn't, it didn't bother me at all. It was just uh, sitting there waiting for them, putting things places you're not expecting them to be. Um, you can't wear wigs, you can't wear any kind of weave, you can't have anything in your hair when you go because they have to put these leads right on your scalp. Um, fortunately, I have the shortest hair in the entire world, practically, and it, I think, 
probably made it easier for them, but it didn't cause me any problems. So they hooked me up to the leads, um, pretty much laid me down in the bed and hooked me up. They asked me if I wanted to watch TV because there was a TV in the room, it was on, but I'm flat on my back and I can't hardly lift up my head to even watch it, plus that would have been the most uncomfortable position ever, so I just said forget it. Laid down and it took me a while to fall asleep because, again, I'm not a sleeper on my back. And so it took me a little bit longer, I think, to fall asleep. I woke up a couple of times in the middle of the night. One time I woke up because I had to go to the bathroom. The second time I woke up because my back was killing me. Because I was flat on my back. And it hurt really bad. They have video cameras and audio cameras in the room. So the lady said, just, you know, if you need it, just, here's my name. Just yell out my name a couple of times and I'll come in and we'll do whatever we need to do. And they, um, and that was pretty easy, but yeah, it was uncomfortable. They wake up at five o'clock and pretty much you leave. <laughs> you know, that's it. The second time I went back, obviously I had more knowledge. And what I wish I'd known before was to make sure that before they actually hooked me into the bed, that I had prepared the sleeping area better. I had made sure I brought my own pillow, and they, they tell you to bring your own pillow and, and a blanket because it gets cold in there. I'm a hot-natured person, and even I was a little chilly. I was glad I brought a blanket. But they asked me to bring a pillow. I didn't have time to pull it out before they laid me down the first time because I didn't know that that was going to be it, that I wasn't going to be able to move after that. Um, I didn't um, think to put the pillows under my legs, and once I was laying flat, it was really hard to negotiate the pillow under my leg which is why I woke up with a backache. Now, once I woke up, went to the bathroom, before I, they hit me back up and I sat down, I moved a pillow. But this time I knew better. And when I got there, they kind of sit you in the room and it takes a few minutes for them to gather everything, all the leads and all the supplies. And so you have a few minutes in the room. And during that time, I pulled it the second time, I pulled my pillows out, put them where I wanted, moved the pillow down where my leg would be, and put everything near the head of the bed that I wanted within reach during the night. Uh, like a the they have a bottle of water there. I want to make sure it was in. Like I didn't have to move much to reach it if I woke up in the middle of the night and got thirsty. Um, because the first time I didn't know that I wasn't going to be able to move till after they laid me down and hooked me up. And then it was too awkward. Um, so the second time you go back they test you with the CPAP machine on. When I got there, they hooked me up like they normally do, the leads and everywhere, wires. Then they brought out the three different types of masks you can use, and they let me wear each one connected to the machine, sitting up in bed just in a relax to see which one I could use, which one I was most comfortable with. So the first one was my least favorite. And it goes on your nose, but it has two ports that fit directly in your nostrils and blow the air directly into your nostrils. That was the most awkward thing I've ever felt. And some people like it. I did not. Um, the second one is the nose piece, and it goes around the nose like this. So it covers your nose. It reminded me of the, the nose um, cover they put on when you're at the dentist and you need nitrous oxide, it felt very similar to that, size-wise, placement-wise. Um, but obviously it's blowing a lot more pressure into your nose. And the third one is the full face mask, and it starts here and it goes down below your mouth. So it covers your nose and your mouth. And that one actually I was fine with uh, too, it was very comfortable. Um, and it was a little easier so they all had their pluses and minuses. The nose piece felt more comfortable on my face, but it was tricky because your airway passages in your mouth and your nose are connected. So air blowing into my nose, if I opened my mouth, it was like coming out my mouth. It was the worst feeling ever. If I tried to um, swallow, my ears popped because of the pressure going in my nose. It was unequal with the pressure in my mouth was different with the face mask. The face mask was much easier because the air was being pushed in, in both sides. I had a choice. It wasn't unequal pressure between my nose and my mouth. But I did start to get a little condensation on it at the very end. It made me a little claustrophobic. So I chose to use the nose 
cover when I slept. And it, uh, it worked pretty well. I, this time I didn't, I had everything positioned before I lay down so that my back didn't wake me up in the middle of the night. I did wake up once to go to the bathroom, but this time I stopped drinking much earlier. I'm used to being able to drink much closer to bedtime, but this time I didn't because I knew how awkward it would be getting up and down and going to the bathroom with all these wires on you. And I woke up in the morning, took me home. Um, they usually give you your CPAP machine and your mask at the end of the second appointment, but they told me that they, uh, the specialist wanted to look at my numbers. Apparently, my numbers from the first session were really, really bad. I like dying a little in my sleep every night. Uh, I want to say I stopped breathing like 300 times an hour. It was a ridiculous number. The specialist, that, made, that meant the specialist wanted to look at my results with CPAP before they actually gave me a machine and got the settings and everything. So I haven't gotten it yet. And so far with my insurance, I haven't had to pay anything for the appointments. But I will have to pay, there will be a cost with the machine. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. I guess I'll know more when they know which machine they want to give me. And um, so those are my tips for that. You know, bring a blanket. Make sure your space where you're going to lay is comfortable. And whatever you need within reaching distance is within reaching distance before you lay down. And just make your space really comfortable because once they lay you down and hook you up, you don't have a lot of movement. It's not like this, but it's very limited. When you get home, you'll still have some of the gunk in your hair they use to keep the leads and the wires. Um, it's easiest to wash out if you, before you wash your hair, before you even wet it. You take some conditioner and rub it where the stuff is in your hair and then warm water, hot water over it. It makes it much easier to get that gunk out of your hair if the conditioner goes on first. So I would come home, put the conditioner on, wait a couple of seconds, and then I'd wash my hair like I normally do and it came out pretty easily. And that's it for the sleep study. That's actually the last thing I have to do with the insurance company um, for them to review it. They'll send everything to the insurance company with all the reports, the doctor's reports, and they said two to four weeks before we have an answer where the insurance company is going to pay for this. So I have two to four weeks to wait, and two to four weeks just to continue preparing for this process. Um, I've been testing some of the protein powders. I've got more ordered. They're coming in. I think I want to cover like the whole thing at once, so maybe that's what I'll do next week, so the home appointment's coming up this week. So that's where I'm at at this moment. Sorry, I just used so there again. I'm trying not to work with me here. And I hope everybody has a good week and stay safe and love yourself.